Oh, hi there. You may have heard that Vancouver has a missing middle problem, but what does that mean? What's missing here? And why does that matter? Well, this is that video. There are a lot of new housing developments underway in Vancouver. It's hard to miss all the cranes across our city, but when you zoom out, you'll notice that most of those new developments are only going into certain parts of our city, like the downtown peninsula or along Canby Street. In the rest of the city, there's hardly any new types of housing being added at all. And that isn't by accident. On much of Vancouver's land, new types of housing just aren't allowed. Check out this map of Vancouver. All the areas highlighted, about half the city, are called RS zones, where the zoning bylaw basically only allows the property owner to build a house with a laneway house or a duplex. That's it. Because new housing options are so restricted in all these RS zones, most of Vancouver's population growth has been concentrated into large-scale developments in certain areas. This leads to the missing middle, an effect where our city has a ton of towers, a lot of houses, and not much else. What's missing are the buildings in between those sizes. Row houses, townhouses, quadplexes, walk-up apartments, and other buildings. In Vancouver, 50% of the city's land is zoned RS, and over 90% of the lots in those areas have single detached houses on them. The city of Vancouver wants to change that, and here's why. Our options for housing in Vancouver today mostly fit into just two categories. You can either live in a high-rise apartment or you can live in a house, if you can afford it. And in this city, that is a very big, very, very expensive if. Now, there's nothing wrong with living in a high-rise, but if you'd prefer not to live here, and you can't afford to live here, unless it's a basement suite, missing middle housing offers a pretty nice middle ground. Townhouses and multiplex units are more affordable to own than a full house, but they still offer the outdoor spaces and ground access that people like about houses. But it's not just about affordability. Missing middle housing is also a lot more versatile. Housing isn't a one-size-fits-all issue. A full house might make sense for families with children, but they might not be as ideal for other groups, like senior couples, young professionals, or multi-generational households. Missing middle housing, on the other hand, can be configured into different sizes and layouts to fit different lifestyles and needs. With this kind of flexibility, we can make it much easier for people from all walks of life to live in Vancouver's residential neighborhoods. Constructing large buildings makes sense in some places, but it's also a very complicated way to build new housing. It requires assembling land, a ton of planning approvals, council meetings, public hearings, and other processes. And to some extent, these requirements make sense. A large new building can have major impacts on the surrounding community, so it's important that it's done carefully. But building missing middle housing allows us to add more housing in a way that is much less complicated. In fact, we already have examples of buildings like this in certain neighborhoods, so it's easier to predict how they'll fit into other neighborhoods. In areas like Kitsilano, Strathcona, and Mount Pleasant, townhouses, multiplexes, and small apartments are already quite common. So when it comes to building new housing, the missing middle hits a sweet spot. It adds more housing, but not so much in one site to trigger a bunch of other impacts on infrastructure and services. It can be done incrementally on individual lots. And because of that, it can be built with less red tape and without the need to evaluate every new building on a case-by-case -case basis. There's a certain quality about missing middle neighborhoods that can make them wonderful places to live in. Having more people in denser housing often results in more walkable communities, areas with businesses and amenities conveniently located nearby people's homes. And having more options for housing also creates more diversity in the community, bringing people from various walks of life and backgrounds together. It's hard to put into words, but being able to walk or cycle to work, step outside your house to grab a coffee from the local cafe, all while having friends and your extended family nearby, really adds to the feeling that you have a community at your doorstep. Now, it's natural to be nervous about any kind of change, but I think it's important to remember that not changing the zoning of a neighborhood doesn't prevent change. You might be preserving the sizes of buildings, but the community still evolves in other ways. Without new housing options, RS neighborhoods become more expensive and exclusive over time. 
As property prices continue to increase, a lot of old houses are torn down and replaced by bigger and more expensive houses. In fact, almost 27,000 houses were torn down and rebuilt in Vancouver's RS zones between 1985 and 2014, with hundreds more demolished every year since. As these neighborhoods become more expensive, fewer and fewer families are able to afford them. And many RS neighborhoods in Vancouver have actually seen a significant decline in the number of school-aged children. In fact, some neighborhoods are seeing fewer people in general. Neighborhoods like West Point Gray and Victoria Fraserview have actually decreased in population since the last census. And that creates many issues. A declining population in Vancouver's RS zones is partially responsible for the closure of local shops and declining enrollments at nearby schools. There simply isn't enough people to sustain these places. So let's get into what's being done about Vancouver's missing middle. This year, the City of Vancouver launched an initiative with the super catchy name, adding missing middle housing and simplifying regulations in low-density neighborhoods. In most RS zones across Vancouver, the city is proposing to allow up to six units on a single lot. What does that mean? Well, for example, on a typical 33-foot by 122-foot Vancouver lot, you could build three or four homes, and on a larger property, you could even build up to six homes. These units can be configured into a single building or two separate buildings, one facing the street and the other facing the laneway. To learn more, visit shapeyourcity.ca slash multiplexes and consider sharing your thoughts with council once the proposal is put forward this summer. Now, it's important for me to mention here that while multiplexes are a new option in low density areas, they're not the only way that the city is adding new, missing middle types of housing. This initiative is part of the overarching Vancouver plan published last year that directs growth and change in the city for the next 30 years in a number of different ways. At the same time, new housing options are already being built in some low density areas through community plans like the Canby Corridor and through other citywide policies like the Secured Rental Policy, which allows rental buildings up to six stories along arterial roads throughout the city. There's also planning work underway right now in the areas around the Rupert and Renfrew Skytrain stations. At the end of the day, missing middle housing is a very important part of how Vancouver grows and evolves in the future. And with these upcoming zoning changes, hopefully we can make the missing middle a bit easier to find.